1821. Texas was a vast, unsettled province in northern Mexico. The Mexican government encouraged colonization with the Constitution of 1824 and its promise of free land, no taxes, and unlimited opportunity. In the years that followed, 25,000 Americans poured into this broad and fertile land west of the Sabine and east of the Colorado. For them, the dream of Texas was born. In 10 short years, the dream ended. A self-proclaimed dictator had come to power in Mexico. His name, General Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana. He revoked the constitution, betrayed the promises, and ignited the flames of revolution. In December of 1835, 300 Texas and Tejano rebels defeated a larger Mexican force in San Antonio de Bejar and drove them from an old mission fortress known as the Alamo. Santa Ana vowed to avenge this defeat and smother the spark of independence. For 13 days, the most precious in Texas history, 189 valiant defenders withstood the siege and battle to recapture the Alamo. This is our story. Day one, February 23, 1836. After Colonel William Travis arrived with 30 men and Davy Crockett arrived with another 30 men, General Santa Ana and roughly 1,500 Mexican soldiers arrived outside of San Antonio. They were spotted at one o'clock that afternoon by the garrison at the Alamo of 150 men. That afternoon, when negotiations for surrender had failed, Santa Ana ordered his men to raise a red flag indicating no quarter would be given if they refused to surrender. The Texans responded with cannon shots. And the siege has begun. Day 2, February 24, 1836. After sustaining bombardment for 24 hours and not losing a single man, Colonel Travis pens his famous letter to the people of Texas and all Americans in the world, asking for reinforcements and vowing that he would never surrender, using the phrase, victory or death. Day 3, February 25th, 1836. James Fannin led a relief column of 300 men from Goliad towards the Alamo. Colonel Travis sent messengers to find General Sam Houston and ask for help. That night the temperatures dropped into the 30s. Day 4, February 26th, 1836. In near freezing temperatures, the Alamo's water well is deemed inadequate to supply water for 150 people in the garrison. A skirmish took place when Texans ventured out of the walls to gather food and water. James Fannin returns to Goliad to reinforce Goliad when he receives word of Mexico's rapid advance. This sadly leads to the Battle of Coleto on March 19th and 20th which led to Fannin and his men surrendering and Santa Ana ordering their execution on March 27th. This moment is known as the Goliad Massacre. Day 5, February 27th, 1836. In near freezing temperatures, the Mexicans cut off the Alamo's water supply at its source, the San Antonio River. James Bonham leaves the Alamo and heads for Goliad and Gonzalez to gather volunteers. Day 6, February 28, 1836. In spite of the cold weather and lack of water, the morale of the Texans inside the Alamo was still high. According to Susanna Dickinson, Davy Crockett played his fiddle and challenged John McGregor, a Scotsman with bagpipes, to a contest. Day 7, February 29th, 1836. Santa Ana sends one of his generals down to Goliad to intercept reinforcements that were on their way to the Alamo from Goliad. 
sent any claim to offer clemency to anyone who surrendered, but this conflicted with his Tornell decree. The sacristy in the Alamo also served as a hiding place for women and children during this time. A small group of men also left Gonzales at this time and headed for the Alamo. Day 8, March 1st, 1836. Still in near freezing temperatures, 32 Texan reinforcements arrived from Gonzales, which was also the site of the very first battle of the Texas Revolution, the Battle of Gonzales. These men are known as the Immortal 32 for their sacrifice and heroism at the Alamo. Artillery fire from the Alamo struck Santa Ana's headquarters on this day. Day 9, March 2, 1836. At Washington on the Brazos, the Texas Provisional Government declared independence from Mexico. Even though this was not known to the defenders of the Alamo, Colonel Travis wrote letters to the Provisional Government expressing his support for independence. Day 10, March 3rd, 1836. James Bonham arrived at the Alamo with news of reinforcements. He reported that 60 men were on their way from Gonzales and 600 more would soon be en route. The Texans fired several shots in celebration. In the meantime, Santa Ana received word from one of his generals of, it, of their victory at Battle of San Patricio on February 27th. The Mexicans rang the church bells to celebrate. On this day also, 1,100 Mexican reinforcements arrived, boosting Santa Ana's numbers to 2,500, outnumbering the Texans more than 10 to 1. It was also on this day that Colonel Travis wrote his final letters from the Alamo. Day 11, March 4, 1836. Mexican artillery can continue to bombard the Alamo. Santa Ana gathers his officers for a council of war. They decided that when the final assault took place, they would take no prisoners and that the time for the assault would be determined the next day. Day 12, March 5, 1836. Santa Ana issues orders for the assault to begin the next day on March 6 at 4 a.m. with a bugle call. A messenger arrived at the Alamo and delivered the news to Colonel Travis that the reinforcements were not becoming. Travis gathered his men and informed them of the situation. According to legend, this is when Travis drew a line in the sand and asked the men to cross over to his side if they intended to stay and fight. All but one decided to stay. At midnight, the Mexicans started moving to their positions, close enough that they were within distance of the Texan muskets. It was also at this time that the Mexican artillery bombardment was stopped, and the last night of the siege was quiet. Day 13, March 6, 1836. At around 5.30 a.m., the Mexican troops received the order to attack. They stormed the Alamo, shouting, Viva la República and Viva Santa Ana. Colonel Travis was awoken and... He yelled out to his men, Come on, boys, the Mexicans are on us, and we'll give them hell. Unable to see the advanced Mexicans in the darkness, the Texan artillery gunners blindly opened fire. The Mexican soldiers had immediate and terrible losses, and the first cannon blast created a gap in the Mexican column. Colonel Travis tra climbed to the top of the north wall battery and fired upon the Mexicans. As he turned to reload his shotgun, a single lead ball struck him in the forehead. Travis fell down and was dead in a seating position. On the south end of the Alamo, Colonel Morales and about 100 riflemen attacked what they perceived was a weak area in the Texan defenses. They met heavy fire from Crockett's riflemen and a single cannon. Mexican forces moved close to the walls but were stopped by heavy fire from the Texans' guns and suffered casualties. Santa Ana sent in some of his reserve. The Mexicans used axes and crowbars to break through the barricaded windows and openings. They climbed through the gun ports and over the wall into the compound. When the Texans turned to deal with one of the breach walls, it allowed Mexicans to enter through another place. Eventually, the Mexicans entered the Alamo at almost every direction. Inside the walls of the Alamo, Mexican soldiers found Colonel James Bowie, who was critically ill and confined to his bed, and they bayoneted him. Crockett's men retreated into the church. 
The rooms of the North Barrack and the Long Barracks have been reinforced with raw cowhides filled with earth. The Mexicans systematically worked their way through the rooms until the last resistance was from within the church. The last stand. One, once more, the Mexicans used a Texas cannon to blow up the defenses at the entrance of the church. Bonham, Dickinson, and Esparza were all killed by the cannon fire. The Mexicans easily overwhelmed the Texans who were left alive. The battle lasted for 90 minutes. According to one of Santa Ana's officers, the Mexican army overwhelmed and captured a small group of Texans, which included Davy Crockett. The prisoners were taken to Santa Ana, where General Catrillon asked for mercy on their behalf. Santa Ana ordered their execution. After the battle was over, Santa Ana ordered Alcade Francisco Ruiz to gather firewood from the surrounding countryside. The bodies of the dead were stacked on pyres of wood. At 5 p.m., the pyres were lit. After 13 days, the siege of the Alamo and the battle were over. The Battle of the Alamo and the Goliad Massacre inspired more Texans to stand up and fight against Santa Ana and his army, which led to Santa Ana's ultimate defeat at the Battle of San Jacinto, thereby ensuring the independence of the Republic of Texas. to personally thank Merrill Jensen for his amazing soundtrack that was featured in Alamo, The Price of Freedom. I cannot imagine a better soundtrack for this film. I personally thank you and your devotion to Texas and its history. The River Center Mall is located steps away from the Alamo. You can park inside the mall, go see the Alamo, then come back and see the film. And please consider donating to the Alamo and all that work day and night to preserve it. The walls need constant restoration and preservation. Please donate to the link that is in the video description. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless Texas.